Heavenly Father, we thank you because you are a faithful God. You are the ancient of days. Lord, there is no restraint to you. We pray, O oh God, that as we have looked at your word, we've established your faithfulness. We've established that you are ever-present help in the time of need. We're asking, O oh God, that in all our different situations, you intervene for us in Jesus' name. And when challenges come, give us the grace to be steadfast, to be fortified, and to be at peace, trusting in you. As we continue in our service, we pray you continue with us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Okay, we're listening to question. If you have any question from our search the scripture lesson, you can ask. You put up your hand, so we'll attend to it. Okay, no question. Let's recite our memory verse. One, two, go. Only the choir members are making any attempt. The rest, let these people decide. One, two, go. You didn't learn it. How many people have the search the scripture booklet? You have, but you didn't read. How many do not have? You don't have the search the scripture booklet. Put up your hand. I don't have a lot of time to ask people questions today. Why don't you have? Let me have a few responses. Why don't you have the booklet? Those who don't have, quickly. Those who don't have, you don't have the booklet. You were putting up your hand. Why don't you have? No reason. Those who don't have the booklet, put up your hand. You don't have the search the scripture booklet, put your hand up. Yes, why don't you have? That's what I'm asking. Those who are putting up their hands, I want a few answers. Yes? Give the mic to them. I just at most of the time when I come. Huh? Just at most of the time you find that when I come they are not there. I think I'll be able to purchase one. Who is not there? No, I'm saying when I come sometimes in, you find that they are not displayed. But now I'll be able to get. No, that one is not a good reason. Because where do you live? I live within Kamala. Eh? I live within Kamala. Within Kamala. Where is this place? Yeah, my point is that I'll get when I come, find that they are not displayed. 
No, you make arrangement to come specifically for it, you will find it. Although it's always displayed. Anyway, you get one today, eh? Yes, I'll find time to... Okay, get next, one. next person. Give to another person, those who don't have. You don't have the booklet. You can see that there are no reasons why you shouldn't have the booklet. That's why it's difficult to get people to answer. So all of you who do not have the booklet, I want a situation where you acquire your own after the service today. Get your own booklet after the service today. These are not ordinary books. These are books you must keep for posterity. You need to go through it over and over after some time you look through it we've looked at uh, these psalms uh, psalm 10 psalm 11 psalm 12 and then psalm 13 all of them are covered in our study of today and uh, what we have gone through you discover that the psalmist in this in these psalms that we are considering had some challenges and they had cause to ask God questions. Uh, in fact, one of them, uh, we normally call it like Psalm 13, the how long question. How long, how long, how long was repeated? How long Psalms? And uh, it started in verse 1. How long will thou forget me? O Lord, forever how long will thou hide thy face from me again how long will i take counsel this is the practical emotional internal experience which is expressed by the godly when these issues of oppression or challenges occur when you go to psalm 11 which is about uh, uh, talking about what happened to him. And that was when jo uh, this person, Saul, <coughs> excuse me, was seeking after his life. And some people asked him, some of the concerned people around him told him and said, what are you doing? Please flee to the mountains. And then he, he came up, he said, in thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. I put my confidence in you. So it's like Nehemiah when he was told, go and hide yourself before they kill you. He said, how can such a person like me go and hide himself? So he said, God, in you I put my trust. This is the song of the steadfast. He steadfast, it doesn't matter the situation. And the, when they are counseling him, to actually hide himself, run to the mountains. He said, how can such a person like me? I'm putting my trust in the Lord. I'm not going to run away. And sometimes we have that kind of situation <clears throat> where you feel that there is danger. This is not safe. Just like the GCK, some people tell our father in the Lord and say, no, considering your age, you are stressing yourself too much. Stop this GCK. And there are some of the people who are also working to ensure that the GCK is stopped. They just feel that, no, this is becoming too much. Now, if a person at that particular age can be steadfast in evangelism, steadfast in winning souls, steadfast in pursuing the unsaved to come and be saved, why should the people like us have any reason why we should want to slow down when he is running at such a speed, despite the risk, as we normally say, that are associated with him doing so much at his age. So that was the same thing like David at this particular time. He had that particular question. And of course, uh, when you go down to Psalm 11, uh, Psalm 10, he's talking about the oppressor. How the oppressor oppress the righteous. And the, the righteous cries out. So it's the cry of the oppressor in, in, chapter, in Psalm 10. And uh, Psalm 11, 
this is the song of the steadfast saying it doesn't matter what happened i am going to keep steadfast keep on holding unto the lord and with all of that psalm 11 we cannot consider psalm 11 without really looking through that important verse which deals with the foundation if the foundations be destroyed in verse 3 it says what can the righteous do and that's the question that every one of us will need to consider and ask if the foundations were destroyed what can the righteous do we need to watch over the foundations the foundations of morality and righteousness and godliness so we watch over the review foundation to be able to retain that, those foundations and not allow them to go to ruin god almighty has revealed the foundation of godliness of morality the character expected of those people who are called by the name of the lord their conduct and their behavior has been revealed in the word of god we must not allow this divinely revealed foundation to be destroyed we must watch over it our watchfulness over the revealed foundation divinely revealed by the almighty god we must watch over it in our own personal lives in our conduct and our behavior interpersonal relationship that is very very crucial we must not allow anything to tamper with that now there is the work of the righteous repairing the destroyed ruined foundation now if the foundation has been destroyed that's the question of the psalmist if the foundation has been destroyed what work what position what stand should the righteous take the person who has been saved the person who is born again the person who has given his life to the lord jesus christ and is steadfast don't forget what i told you of the other song is the steadfastness a song of steadfastness of the righteous saying i'm not going to give up it doesn't matter the situation and the circumstances a lot of people are giving up today steadfastness is not found in the midst of the children of god as it ought to be you find people who are supposed to be called by the name of the lord they are dragging their feet behind you see coldness spiritually you see lethargy and the covid 19 came in to bring the good and the bad out from the midst of the people of god he has brought the good out in the sense that we can now use technology to communicate it has been there but our eyes were not open to it to that particular level until the problem of covid came but then it also now revealed another nature in the lives of the people who are called by the name of the lord who should be running after seeking the face of the lord they are no longer doing that why what is the reason because no i can connect online and they forget that connecting online for a service where you should be physically present is not the same as going physically present in that particular place steadfastness which is lacking and this ruin that has occurred as a result it's not covid 19 that actually brought that about covid 19 just helped to bring out was what was in the inside of man and you find people are now running online for services when they should be physically present they go online you cannot baptize converts online water baptism online you can do so many other things preach online but even those preaching online the reason why is not making impact in the lives of people when they should physically go is because as the online meeting is going on the devil takes advantage of other people not watching over you you not watching over other people to now engage you in doing some other things that does not allow the word of god to really sink into you and that's why they you will find fake experiences that are being produced today you find people who are called by the name of the lord living fake lives not according to the word of god according to the will of god why because 
they do not have time to concentrate in the presence of God, to allow the word of God to sink in and correct what needs to be corrected in their life. They don't even have time to pray after the message. Why? Because they are online, they are on their own, they are at liberty. The discipline that should be experienced and they express is no longer there. So they lose nerves and the devil likes it that way. So you now find a situation where we even say, no, it's this generation. It has nothing to do with the generation because the word of God does not change. The power in that same word of God remains the same. It does not change from generation to generation. The standard required of the people of God remains the same. It does not change. And God is not going to change it because of technology, but we've allowed the technology to take out the best in man. That you now find a situation where there is lack of commitment, there is lack of perseverance, and that's what the psalm is teaching us. Perseverance. That it doesn't matter the situation, we must persevere. And through prayer, we can overcome. So he's saying, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The righteous has something to do. And he must not fold his hands and say, okay, they want to destroy the foundation, it's okay, it's already ruined, there is nothing we can do. What will the righteous do? First and foremost, he himself must remain steadfast. He should know that this is not the root. This is not the way to go. This is not what it should be like. Therefore, I must, even if others backslide, if others give up, I'm going to keep to the old paths. That's the very first thing he must do. If the foundation be destroyed, where it has been ruined, whether it's a marriage, whether it's a ministry, whether it's in morality, the righteous, the one who professes to be a Christian, the one who professes to be born again, he has a responsibility. First and foremost, save your own soul. Remain and continue. That's what Job tells us in Job 17, in verse 9. He said, the righteous, he will hold on to his way. And those people who have uprightness, who are perfect, the perfect, he will be stronger and stronger. Make yourself sound. After being saved, make yourself serious continue to be sound in faith and then hold on to your way don't allow the compromise that is around to erode your life erode your christian life he must hold on to his way but then he cannot just hold on to his way and say well i'll just keep myself i'm going to make it to heaven what are you going to do about the ruined foundation the righteous the repairers he must do something if you look at that uh, uh, particular psalm he, uh, he, he's talking about uh, psalm 12 in psalm 12 in verse 1 he said help lord because the godly man sees it godliness is not there you don't find too many godly people around again you come into the house of God, you find people who are deceiving themselves, and as a result of that, they are also deceiving other people. Uprightness. He said, the godly man sees it. He said, for the faithful fell from among the children of men. You can't find a lot of people who are faithful. As a result of that, something must be done. The repairer must do something. And that's what we are told in Isaiah 58. In verse 1 and verse 2, he said, you cry aloud. Show my people their transgression. And yet they seek me daily. They read Bible. They have quiet time. They do all sorts of things and so forth. That's what the psalmist is crying in this Psalm 12. He says, help, Lord, you help us. So we must not only call upon God, he calls for real serious intercessory prayer that we pray for the Almighty God to visit his people again and revive his work. Like Habakkuk cried, he said, you must revive, revive the work in the midst of the year. Oh God Almighty, do something for us. Faithfulness is ceasing, is failing from among the children of men. But that's not all he should do. He must come to be called the repairer of the breaches. And that's what that Isaiah chapter 58 in verse 12, he said, those people who be of you, your converts, you raise them up to the point where they themselves will be called the repairer of the breaches. 
they themselves will repair the breaches that are there and you yourself you will not be called the repairer of the breaches because you are not just folding your hands or closing your eyes to the things that are happening so there is need to really call upon God to pray so that the almighty God will do something and then the repairer not only is he the repairer but he becomes the restorer he restores people back to that's what the righteous can do because that's the question we must answer in Psalm 11 verse 30. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? He must do something. He remains steadfast. Not only that, he must supplicate to ensure that people are restored back. And then he keeps on maintaining the foundation that has been restored, not to allow it to actually uh, uh, go bad again. And we must have that willingness apart from all of that we have the willingness to ensure that we act like reformers who retain so the willingness to restore and to reinforce uh, reinforce the defined defend and then you make sure that the foundation which has been restored is not tampered with at all by anybody we've allowed a number of things to go bad house caring fellowship is almost non-existent in some places and this is something that has helped to develop converts keep them in the faith and then also maintain the growth in the church and make people up but house caring fellowship is not there you have the situation where people who they used to call them pastors pastors of classrooms you go to the church where there are pastors, it's an, almost an empty classroom. And because we say all that you stop, that's how caring fellowship. Let's go back. Those people who are called pastors, let them go back and let's go to the foundation and rebuild. They now say, okay, since they have stopped me from being a pastor, meeting, I'm not going. Workers meeting, I'm not going. What am I going there for? leaders meeting i'm not going because there's i'm not a pastor again is it the title that you are running after or you have a relationship with god which makes you to want to build and equip and make sure that the foundation is not we must go back and repair these broken foundations which has been destroyed house caring fellowship we used to run up and down and you find house caring fellowship within six months it has grown but today you have leaders who are just floating in the air what makes you a worker they just walk about like supervisors church service you cannot pinpoint what they are doing in the kingdom of god these are destroyed foundations we must go back and get these things repaired and restore it back to what and individuals must start with themselves that we rebuild the foundation we restore the foundation and we raise up once again the standard and let it be maintained so that we actually carry out all that should be carried out that's what so it's not just we don't just read these things for reading we should apply them to ourselves what can the righteous do he must remain righteous he must restore the ruined foundation and they should do everything possible to ensure that we actually resuscitate those people who have backslidden who have fallen let's look for them the people who have stopped coming to church you don't see them why did they stop going to church and you even find a number of the things that has helped us before we abandon them in the time past if a, a person is moving from one fellowship area to another fellowship area even the day of the movement house caring fellowship members will go there to help that particular person to shift and shift to the new place and they hand that person over to another house caring fellowship leader and say this person is now in your house caring fellowship area we are handing the person over to you the same goes for somebody is moving from one zone to another the zonal leader together with the people in the zone they get involved the person cannot just move without people knowing that this person has moved or this person is about to move because house caring fellowship was always there 
And everybody was involved in the house caring fellowship. We asked the welfare of one another. I didn't see you at the service. I didn't see you at the Bible study. All that was going on, but all of that has stopped. Nobody cares. Whether somebody comes for service or not, nobody worries. And a person can move from one zone to another zone without the other people knowing. And if it's somebody who wants to backslide, who wants to give up the faith, immediately the person moves and he sees that where I have moved from, nobody is asking, uh, uh, where are you? And where I have moved to, those ones don't even know that I'm there. It just fizzles out. It's after so long a time we now remember so and so when we were wanting to buy chairs he pledged that he will buy two chairs where is he you remember him because of the contribution he should make but the contribution that should be made into his life spiritually nobody remember and we have become so careless spiritually to the extent that the souls of the people doesn't mean anything to us again. Money is more important than the souls of the... What shall he profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? We, we now turn things upside down and we don't care. A person can... A, a group pastor will have a person move from his group to another group. Nobody takes that person to go and hand over to the new group and say, this person was in our group, this person is now in your group, this is the home, let's go my brother, let me go and show you, or woman leader who is in charge of the group, let me take you, our sister has moved to your new group, this is the new person, nobody is concerned about any of that again, and people begin to fizzle out, and that's how come you see, before COVID, by now, we are just half the number we used to be before COVID. In fact, we are, we are struggling to get back to half what we used to be before COVID. You know the reason? COVID sent everybody indoors. And when we started meeting, it's those who bother to come for meeting that you see. Those who didn't come, nobody bothers about them. We are busy with activity and so forth. This is ruining the foundation. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Let's go back to our register before COVID and trace everybody that has actually disappeared, fizzled out, hiding, hibernating. Get all of them out and let's serve the Lord. Let's rise up on our feet as we pray. to the Lord.